Good morning, Divergent. Uh, my name is Cade and my wife and I lead the Canberra region. Uh, and so we're excited here to be with you this morning. Uh, if you are new with us, uh, about every roughly every six weeks, uh, all our gatherings around the Canberra Queenland uh, region will come together for one service. So today is our one service uh, where we come and join. So um, say hello, put a comment uh, if you, you're with us this morning. Um, it's exciting to do this. I uh, just want a, a few announcements. It's been a while since we've made a few announcements, but just to let those that are new with us uh, what is going on uh, during this crazy time. Um, so if you're new, we, we have Zoom gatherings that have been meeting uh, weekly on a Sunday, and, um, and that's all our gatherings around Canberra. So if you're interested in getting connected uh, with one of our, our gatherings on Zoom, uh, which we'd love because that's great. It's where we have, have an opportunity to interact. Uh, just email us at info at Divergent Church. Dot com. Uh, another thing, if you're new, if you're looking to um, call Divergent Home and really want to give into the life of the community, uh, again, you're welcome to go to our website at uh, divergentchurch.com slash giving and there the details will be. And please don't feel obliged. This is something that we as a church do as, as a part of our worship. Another thing that's still going on and still doing a great job is our youth, uh, the team down um, that often meet in Carabar. Uh, still doing an awesome job. They're meeting online. And so, again, if you're new with us and you're looking to get your uh, kids involved, um, the youth guys are still meeting on a Friday night. Uh, again, email us or message us on Facebook. Um, but I just want to get you, you know, encourage you to get involved and get your kids involved in that. They're doing an awesome job down there. Uh, also, this, this Wednesday coming, uh, we have All In with Hamish and Andy. Uh, not the Hamish and Andy that you're probably thinking of when I said that, uh, but we have Hamish Thompson, uh, who leads our Abundant Life Church in, in Wellington, uh, not ours, his church, uh, and Andy Chin, who leads Wesley International. And so they're going to come around a round table. Uh, all in is when we usually would come all together as a church on a Wednesday night, uh, but we'll be doing it on a live stream over Facebook and YouTube at 7.30. Uh, this will be an opportunity where you can ask questions, and we're going to be talking and ask some questions about how the Holy Spirit leads in everyday life. And these guys, I know, uh, you know, how they just walk with the Holy Spirit and, and how the Holy Spirit leads them. And so it's going to be really exciting. And Josh and Andrew will also be joining us as well. So a great opportunity to come, ask questions, uh, learn from these guys and how the Holy Spirit leads them. Uh, something that's been on my heart um, over this uh time we've been in lockdown, um, something that God's been really speaking to me about is faith versus fear. And, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people are driven and maybe driven it by fear in this time. And that can be either end of the scale. That can be from the pandemic, people are afraid of death and um, people not taking the vaccine. And there's that side of the fear or, uh, or it could be the other end of the scale where they, people think it's a scandemic um, and they're fearful the government are trying to control us. Either way, I think neither side are healthy. Uh, and I think faith is the key to here. And it's something that uh, we read when Jesus was in the storm and he was asleep on the boat while the storm came and the disciples were so afraid. And, you know, Jesus tells the storm to be quiet and he says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And I think this really speaks into our situation because I think sometimes we think Jesus may be asleep in this situation, but he is not. Um, and I, what I love about this, and this is something that's going into, you know, we're, we're doing a new series coming up. Uh, and Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit. And that helps us to have faith, faith in this. And, and so I want to encourage you. Um, and something that's really been speaking to me is 2 Corinthians 5. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, remember, that's hearing, not reading. And that is the Holy Spirit that's speaking to us. And I just think, uh, yeah, faith, that's where our faith comes from, is when we have that communion with the Holy Spirit. And I think that's something that I want, um, yeah, you guys to hear and understand that we can walk with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit will help us through these storms. And so we're going to do a series around the Holy Spirit, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, and I really hope that that's going to build our faith uh, in these next five, six weeks. So we're going to have guys like Hamish uh, Thompson come and share. Uh, we have Naomi Burrell also coming to share. And then we've got Josh, who's going to 
and Ange are also going to share about this. And I, I just love um, their leadership and their passion to walk with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to have Josh here this morning that's going to speak with us. He's coming all the way from Turkey. Uh, he's up. He is doing this live, which is amazing. I think it's 3.30 in the morning for Josh. Um, so it's exciting to have him live, in, live with us. And I really hope you enjoy this series. And I really hope you enjoy this message that Josh is going to bring with us this morning. Yeah, am I on? So just checking this call. It is, uh, it's so good to be with you, uh, Gunaydan from uh, Turkey. Uh, as uh, Caterin said, it is, uh, it is, it is very early here. Uh, Will was talking earlier that he uh, was keen on grabbing a coffee, and I was, my instinct was to grab a coffee. But knowing that I should probably go to bed straight after this, I, uh, I probably wisely decided not to. But can I tell you, it's a privilege to be with you. It's a privilege to know that wherever we are, uh, around Canberra, around the region, around the state, around the nation, or around the very nations of the world, we can be together. Uh, you know, this morning, I, I don't want to, in a sense, get the corner on what we're talking about this morning. I don't want to put a platter out for you just to consume quite easily. But in fact, I want to open a door for you. I want to encourage you to take a journey of knowing the Holy Spirit. To, today, I want you to lean more deeply into the word that he's inspired. I want you to lean more deeply into the life that he's called you to. I want you to take uh, what you know of the Spirit and trust him as you follow him. Uh, so let us pray as we dive into the word. I'm really keen, of course, uh, virtually never not keen. So let's pray. God, I just thank you that you're good. And Lord, we trust your Spirit. We trust the Spirit and the Word that uh, the Spirit has inspired. Uh, Lord, we trust you with our very lives. And Lord, we do come. Lord, as we do come around your Word, Lord, we just pray that we would realize that when the Word and the Spirit come together, you create life. You create, you create a love and you bring a love that is beyond everything we can understand in our own selves. We love you so much, uh, but Lord, only because you first loved us. In your name, amen. I'm going to dive around scripture quite a bit from the beginning to the end, so uh, you don't have to open to every passage. I'm going to hit a lot of verses. I'm going to probably uh, reference or uh, paraphrase a number of passages, but eventually we'll also land on Romans 8. So if you wanted to put your thumb in anywhere, Romans 8, uh, we will get to that uh, in quite a while. But I want you to come to the very first verse of scripture because at the end of the day the holy spirit is to be found in every page in every age in every moment every every moment that causes momentum throughout the scriptures and in our lives as well from the very beginning of creation the spirit of god is active and so hear me genesis 1 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was. You know, even before we roll in here, I want you to realize and I want you to be reminded of and I want you to remember that when the Spirit of God and the Word of God come together, He creates life. He enlivens and He excites. He convicts and He comforts. He empowers and He engages us. He, he draws and He directs us. Throughout the Old Testament, from the very opening moments of Scripture, of history, the Holy Spirit is consistently evident in the life of community and creation. This has not changed from the very first moments, and it continues to be the case. I want you to come with me throughout the Old Testament as we eventually dive into the new. When confessing his sin, King David pleads, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me, he says in Psalm 51, 11. Can I tell you, from enabling Samson's mighty deeds to giving wisdom and ability to bear the burden of leadership for the 70 leaders, the Holy Spirit is evident everywhere through every page of the Old Covenant. It's important to remember this before you can get further in because sometimes we think of the Holy Spirit as being absent virtually from the Old Testament, waiting for his moment 
to have his opportunity and the new, but this is not the case. The Holy Spirit is with us at all moments and has always been with us, although his role was slightly different at times. When in, uh, when in exile, Israel was oppressed and faced with everyday temptation to trust in human resource. Have you ever been faced with that, that opportunity or that temptation to trust in your own understanding, to trust in the ways of human culture? And this is what it says in Zechariah 4, 6. This is the word of the Lord that was said to Zerubbabel, not by might and not by power. This is in reference to human power and human might and human ability. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 42, verse 1, prophesies in regard to the spirit and Christ. Behold my servant whom I uphold my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring justice to the nations. Oh, I want you to catch this, and I want you to hear this as it ebbs and flows throughout the pages and the ages of Scripture. The, the spirit is central to everything, and that means for you and I, knowing the spirit, knowing who the Spirit is, not just theoretically, but knowing who the Spirit is in an everyday relational regard must be central to our lives. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, the Trinity, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, is expressed clearly. It says this in Mark 1, verse 10, just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And then it says, and at once the spirit sent him out into the desert, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, it's really important to recognize that quite often, depending on where you are in life, you will relate well to the Father as the loving Father who loves you. You will relate to Jesus because of, in practical reality, the human face that has been shown to us in flesh. But for some of us, we struggle with the Holy Spirit, or rather we turn the Holy Spirit simply into a power or impulse or force to be used. But that's, that's not who the Holy Spirit is. It's true that the Holy Spirit brings us power. It's true that the Holy Spirit brings change, but the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God with us in an ongoing matter. It does not matter where you are, where you look in Scripture, you will see the work of the Holy Spirit either directly or indirectly. I said, not just a nondescript force, not just a power to be used, not just a mindless tool to be beckoned for a good meeting. The Holy Spirit is a person. And I want you to catch this because as we ebb and flow into this sermon series, as we unpackage who the Holy Spirit is, uh, we're going to unpack this more. But the Holy Spirit is full of passion and desire, bearing every element of the character of God, both moral and otherwise. He can be grieved, and we'll talk about that. He can be sad, upset, offended. When we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about a relationship with God. We're talking about a relationship with a real person. The Holy Spirit is God, fully God, not a sub parts, not, not some disconnected force of God, as some cults would speak, but God. And today I want you to hear this. The Holy Spirit is God with you and I. When Jesus left, he said he would send his Holy Spirit to be a comfort to us, to be our advocate. It shows us in John 14, 15, and 16, right where you are now, the Holy Spirit is. Whatever circumstances you're walking in right now, whatever questions you might have, whatever struggles you might have, where you are right now, the Holy Spirit is with you. And I want you to capture this. I want you to 
I want you to acknowledge this before we even move on. Central in everything we are called to do is the joint authority and position of the one true God, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19 teaches us to baptize in the name, the one name of the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the authority given under the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We can only know the Father. We can only become like the Son because we are led by the Spirit. If you come with me to Romans 8 uh, today in verse 1, and I, I just want you to hear some of the ebb and flow of knowing the Spirit and the importance of not just having a theoretical uh, experience or a theoretical knowledge of the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit cannot just be a theological confession. He is an everyday relationship. The Holy Spirit cannot just be a theological confession that we, we speak of with our mouth, but it, the Holy Spirit must be the one we're in relationship with in every day. Uh, and I want you to, to capture, uh, remember these three elements as we move ahead. The Holy Spirit is a person, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Holy Spirit is with you. Verse 1, therefore, Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Capture that, capture that just quickly. The one who gives you life is the Spirit. The one who sets you free is the Spirit. So can I encourage you, you need to know the Spirit, not just as some one-off salvific experience, but the one who will walk with you through the darkest moments, the one who will walk with you when you feel that you are trapped. Verse 3 continues and says, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be met in us. Those who do not live according to the flesh, but live according to the spirit. And, and I, want you to, I want you to ask this question of yourself right now. Am I living according to the instinct and the philosophies of this world, the instinct of the flesh? Or am I living according to the leading and the character of the spirit? Because right now in this age, this time of history, people will tell you to do what feels right. I was born this way. They will use all sorts of excuses to follow the flesh. But we are not of those people that follow the flesh. Rather, we are of those people who know the spirit of God, who follow the spirit of God, who trust the spirit of God, even when it's a difficult journey. We are of those who are not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 5, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the, uh, have their mind set on what the flesh desires. Where's your mind set? But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set. Note this thing. Your mind is the one that can direct you back to the spirit, to the things of the spirit. I don't know where you are. But you need to reset your mind away from those things that your flesh desires and put them on what the spirit desires. The mind governs, and that means under the rule of the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Can I tell you, you need to walk according to the spirit because there's life and peace and freedom to be found in following the spirit. Of God. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. You know, we have to realize and know that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That's what Romans uh, 1 Corinthians 12 tells us. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So I don't know where you are. It just let's pause for a second. Maybe you don't know Jesus this morning. Maybe you're sitting here and you're like, you happen to tune in because someone shared this, this live stream. And you're like, hey, I like the Christian stuff. Uh, so how do I do this? 
And can I tell you, the answer is you don't do this. This is the work that God does in you by trusting Jesus. And the way you trust Jesus is by realizing that we cannot do this. We are sinners. That means we have no ability to please God in and of ourselves. But there is one who has built a bridge between us and the Father, Jesus. And you know there's a long way in this journey, but if you trust him, if you turn from your own desires and trust him and give your life to him, he will fill you with his spirit. He will lead you in every day and he will enliven you. Where you know there is death, he will bring life and resurrection. Keep on coming with me. Come for the journey one way or another. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. I want you to feel the weight of this in a sense. If you don't have the spirit of God, you don't have Christ. If you don't have Christ, you do not have the Father. There is a the unified reality, the Trinity here. One God, one God. But if Christ is, uh, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And I, I honestly, I could preach on this passage for a long time, but I want you to hear what's going on there. Even if right now your body feels subject to death, even if you are going through a rough time, whether whether it's the corona circumstances or other circumstances in your life, even if your body is in the struggle, can I tell you, your life can be full of the spirit and full of an abundance that can not be defined by circumstance, by disease or by isolation or whatever it might be. But if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. We have an obligation. There is an obligation that you and I have, but it's not to our flesh. You do not have to fulfill the desires of your flesh. You are called to know the spirit and fulfill the desires of the spirit. Our obligation is not to the flesh to live according to it. But if you live according to the flesh, it says in verse 13, you will die. But if you live... If if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you'll live. You'll know true life. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, and I want you to grab this this morning. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you have received brought you to adoption, to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father, be close to me. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Even indeed we share in in his sufferings in order that we might share in his glory. You know, to know the Holy Spirit is to know life. To know the Holy Spirit is to know freedom. To know the Holy Spirit is to know a hope that transcends even the brokenness of our body, knowing that even if I die, I will live. Even if I am crushed, I will never be perplexed. Even if the world falls down around me, I can be still and know that he is God and he is with me. The Holy Spirit is a person you can walk in uh, with in every life. Can I encourage you, but hear also the, the gravity of this. The Holy Spirit is a person who is grieved. It says this in Ephesians 4 verse 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. There is nothing worse than knowing about the Spirit, 
but not knowing the very presence of the Holy Spirit in everyday life. Maybe you need to acknowledge him this morning. Don't ask for him to be present. He is. Often we are not present. Acknowledge he is present with you this morning. You know, sometimes some people say, what does it matter if I and <clears throat> name whatever chosen sin or rebellion against God you want to do? What, if, what does it matter if I? It doesn't hurt anyone else. Can I tell you, it grieves the Holy Spirit who is who loves you with an intensity. And the opposite of or the, the vul, there's a vulnerability, not a not a power vulnerability, but an emotional, relational vulnerability that comes with love. And that's hurt. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can sadden the Holy Spirit. His love for you guarantees not just his struggle with you, but a grieving and a sadness at destructive rebellion. The, the Holy Spirit can be sinned against and lied to. We are to obey him, Acts 10, 19 to 20. One says, and we are to honor him, Psalm 51, 11 shows us. It is a spirit who comes to convict us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Catch this from Isaiah 63, verse 10. I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds of which he is to be praised. According to the Lord, uh, for he has done uh, the things he has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for Israel. According to his passion, compassion and kindness, he has said, surely there are, these are my people, children who will be true to me. And I want you to catch this, true to me. And so he became their savior. This is talking about Israel, but it's the same redemptive passion that he has for, for people now. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is a person. He can be sinned against and lied to, honored and dishonored, grieved and distressed. He comforts us and he advocates for us. He loves us. The Holy Spirit is God. From the creation itself, bringing the world into existence as the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, as recorded in Genesis 1-2, to his inspiration of the prophets bringing the words of God, to us being the temple of God as described in 2 Peter 2, 20, uh, 1 21. because why are we the temple? Because his Spirit lives in us. The Holy Spirit is not a sidekick. He is not a semi-God. He's not simply a force of God. He is God. Acts 5, 1 through 4 tells the story of Ananias and Sapphira. This should be one of those stories. Maybe if you are went to church as a kid, you'll know this story, and it'll probably freak you out a little bit, freaked me out a little bit about lying to people in church. And it says there's now a man named Ananias together with his wife. This is verse 1 of Acts chapter 5. So also sold a piece of property with his wife full with his wife's full knowledge. He kept back part of the money for himself, but he brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? Note that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for land. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money also at your disposal? What made you think you could do such a thing? You have not just lied to human beings, you have lied to God. The end of this story, dare I say, is actually that Ananias and Sapphira die. Because when we are engaging with the Holy Spirit, we are engaging with God, the God of the universe, who convicts us of righteousness, sin, righteousness, and judgment, who comforts us through the hardest times. When you know, and I think this is important when you consider the journeys we walk through, when you know that the prompting in your spirit is truly the God of the universe, when the conviction of the spirit hits you heavy and calls you to repentance, be aware, be careful, because you are dealing with the Holy Spirit of God. When he comforts you, don't ignore him to listen to the ways and the will of the world because we have the Holy Spirit with us, a person. 
the, the spirit of God. And I want you to hear this this morning. God himself, the spirit of God, who is a God who will comfort you and convict you, who will enable you, will energize you, is with you right now. As I've said from the beginning of this, and I want you to capture this as a doorway into where we're going over this series, from the very opening moments of creation through to your very salvation and through to the very restoration of all things, when all things are made uh, right, the Holy Spirit is active, he is personal, and he is powerful. Knowing the Spirit is not an act of theory, but an act of trust. Knowing the Spirit is not just an intellectual understanding of his nature, but an ongoing experience of such. Now, I want you to acknowledge right where you are that the Holy Spirit is with you. This is not theory. This must be our everyday reality. To know the Spirit is not simply some emotional impulse, but it's birthed far deeper than our emotion and our will in his work in our spirit and in our soul and in our body and every part of us. Uh, knowing the spirit is not emotional impulse. Knowing the spirit is something far deeper. The Holy Spirit changes everything and he started with you and I. He started with the new people marked by his spirit, set aside for his purpose and prepared by his power. In verse third, uh in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, he says this. And I'm going to land and leave on this because I want you to hear this. And I don't want you to simply hear this with your mind today. I want you to allow this to sink deep into your spirit. And it's a benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. You don't walk apart from the spirit. Don't don't sell yourself short and simply know about the spirit. Know the spirit of God, as He will recreate and restore and re-energize you and put you where you need to be. Come on a journey with us, not just today, but in everyday life as we follow the Holy Spirit together. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you are good and you have called us. And Lord, by your spirit, through the work of your son, because of the sending of the father, Lord, you have shown yourself to us in flesh, in Jesus. But Lord, in an ongoing regard, in comfort and conviction, in teaching and edification, in building us up through your spirit. Lord, we pray that we would be a people that do not lean upon our own understanding, that essentially treat the triune God like the Father, Son, and Holy Bible. Lord, we know we have your spirit with us, and we love your word, written word. But, Lord, we also pray that you would lead us in everyday life as well, that you would enliven us, that you would focus us, and that we would know the communion the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in everyday life. We love you, but only because you love us first. In your precious name, amen. Amen. So it's been a privilege to be with you guys, and uh, I just look forward to uh, walking with you as we journey through knowing the Holy Spirit and knowing his power and knowing his presence, not just in a meeting, within the mission of God in your everyday life. Thanks, guys. Love you.